Hey, everybody. Notice anything different this evening? I didn't really change my whole craft room around. I just moved the table to the other side and moved the lights over there because I wanted to work on some DTF to start with tonight. So let me catch my breath. You know, I always get stressed when I start and move a few things out of the way. I want to tell you a story about what happened with my DTF printer. And it ends well, but I want to tell you in case you're interested in DTF or in case you've purchased DTF and this happens to you. But before I do, let me say hello. Now I see Sharon Davenport. Sharon, I'm terrible at getting to the post office. I haven't mailed the earrings off yet. And the post office doesn't open until I'm at work and then they are closed for an hour and a half during lunch and then they close at four. So, but that's no excuse because I just, I hate going to the post office, but I'll get those off soon, okay? I appreciate your patience. Hey, Nicole, how are you today? Hope you're doing well. Nicole is Precious Pieces, in case you're not familiar with that. And if anyone is here that's new, please say hi in the chat if you want. If you'd rather just not even be in the chat, that's fine too. But we'd love to hear from you if you're new. Or if you haven't talked before in the chat, say hey. Also, this is just an interactive, we're just playing around, just just crafting, it's not a true tutorial. So if you're interested in that, stick around. If not, check out the channel. You might find something else that you like. Hey, Ruby, hope you're doing well. Hey, Angel. So if anybody didn't see it, Angel B had a premiere about an hour ago, and I can't remember the name of it. It's a new Caesar product, Reflective HTV, and there's another word in it. And it's really, really pretty. So check out her premiere if you want to see that. Hey, Robin. Hey, Patricia. Happy Friday tomorrow to you, Victorious Creations. Hey, Tianda. Hey, Sandra. Hello, Zelda. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Merlinda. Hope you're doing well. Hope everybody's doing well. I don't know why I say that once in a while and not every other time, but you don't want to hear me talk that long. Hey, Willie. Hey, Dee. Hey, Leslie. Hey, Ethel. Kelly Wyatt did her first rhinestone template, so check that out. If you, I don't know, Kelly, if you put it in other Facebook groups, but she put it in my Facebook group, and it looks nice. It looked good. Um, it was her first one. I think she did amazing. I think it said Duke, right, Kelly? All righty. Hey, Terry. Hey, Martha. Hi, Jennifer. I need it over. Hope you're doing well. Hey, Dana. There I go. I said it again. Hope Anita's doing well, but, you know, not the rest of you. Until I say it again, you know that's not true. Hey, Jackie. Hi, Marta. Thank you. So this shirt was designed by Delanda. Um, the template was, it's gorgeous. I love it too, but I appreciate you saying that. Hey, Tarika. Hey, Martin Jones, Sylvia Dinkins. Hey, Gail, Patrice, love. You need to just, just relax. Just relax this evening. But I'm glad to see you in here. You know that too. Okay. So I don't know if it's Jeannie or Jean, but regardless, thank you so much for being here. And if you want to let us know, Jean would be one, Jeannie would be two, and three means I don't even have it right with those two. Hey, Jesse. Hey, Gail. All right, let's see. Sharon says hello to all 34 in the chat and only 22 likes. Let's get those likes up. Thank you, Sharon. All right. Hey, Karen Ann. All right, I'm going to start kind of scrolling down to the bottom. Hey, Daisy, Martin, I don't know why I thought I said hi to you already. I probably did, but hey, hey, Rachel, and bias, and Porgy Town. I have called her Porgy Town all this time, and it's Porgy Town. So anyway, my apologies, and she said it wasn't a big deal. She didn't care, um, but I'm going to try to get names right. Hey, Renee. Hey, Marlene. Hey, Tonya, hope you're doing okay these days. 
Okay, Danny, Mimi, Up Designs. Hey, Amanda. Hey, Talanda, see my shirt? I gotta stand on my tiptoes, isn't it pretty? Wonder if you designed that. If you were here earlier, you heard me say you did. Hey, Dee Dee. Hey, Yvonne. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and start scrolling down. I see Judy. Thanks for being here, Lil Stitch. Geneva. All right, there's a lot of comments. Hey, Mary. Carla Brower. It is, isn't it? All right, let's see if Jean or Jeannie told me which was right and which was wrong. Hey, Stacy. Let's see, I'm getting back into t-shirts and bling. Awesome, I'm trying to figure out what DTF is. We're gonna talk about it a little bit. I won't spend a ton of time on it, but I'm trying to, you know, do some different things on Thursdays. You know, I wanna bling, but I wanna do some other things too. Hey, Robin. Okay, I'm looking for Jeannie. Hey, 755. Hey, Cynthia. Number two. I think that was Jeannie, right? Jean or Jeannie? I'm sorry. Let me write this down. Number one is Jean. Number two is Jeannie. So give me a number again. Jean equals one. Jeannie equals two. All right, sorry about that. I'm old, just blame it on my age. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Hey, Tim, I think I saw you in there. Hey, Marissa, I'm scrolling past. All right, number two, Jeannie. Awesome, thank you. Thank you so much. Okay, so let me take that off the screen so you can see my shirt. Look how pretty that is. It is my favorite Labrador on the outline of She Is. It's candy apple, inside she is, and then these are a silver cyan metalite. So if you're interested in that, I do have the baby boobies link in the video description. And we're gonna talk about rhinestones in a little bit when we brush in a new template. Not a new template, it's one of Patrice's, but it's new to me. Okay, so I was working doing DTS stuff. And my printer's working perfectly fine, perfectly fine, perfectly fine. I came back up the next morning and I had two red flashing lights. I like to have this up so I can see how it's pretty. But there's two lights right here that were flashing alternating. So one, then the other, then the other, then the other. And one of them has a little ink droplet and the other one has a trash can. And so I did a little research and I found that what that meant was that I think they call it the ink pad. Ink pad. So if you're very familiar, hey, Sheila, if you're familiar with, thanks, Stacy. if you're familiar with printers, then there is something called a waste tank or a maintenance tank or a waste box, maintenance box, um, ink pad. All of those are pretty much the same thing. And typically in a printer, you, with your waste ink, it's filling that up. So in the ink pad case, it's saturating that ink pad. And the printer knows after so much use that it's supposedly full. Well, on a DTF printer, your waste ink is actually ran through the back of the machine in a tube and down into a container so that it's not filling that up. So even though it really wasn't full or saturated or whatever you wanna say, it thought it was. So when you get a DTF machine, you typically get two zip drives. So on the pro colored, my pro colored at least, the white zip drive had all the installation software and some maintenance things. And on it was a resetter so that I could reset the computer so it would take it back to zero, um, zero prints or whatever. So the ink pad seems fresh, even though I don't even use ink pad. So I, the other zip drive that you get, you have to have it plugged in when you're actually printing. And that's what's called the RIP software. Because DTF not only has blue, yellow, I'm not using the right name, cyan, yellow, magenta, and black. It also has white. Because with DTF, the beauty of DTF is 
if you're doing your images on anything except for a white shirt, you put white on the back of the ink and that makes your ink pop. So it's just a background for your ink. Well, when you can't print, <laughs> DTF machines, they, they require, I would say daily maintenance. You should do daily maintenance, but I do maintenance now one every three days maybe um, when I'm not printing. I used to print a small image every day and I just don't do that anymore. So when I came up here one morning, I'm sorry, this story is so long. The alternating lights were going, so I couldn't do anything. I was just shut down. And that was over a week ago, a good week ago. I don't know exactly, but about a week ago. And so I couldn't only not print. I couldn't do any maintenance. I couldn't do any head cleaning. And so I tried and tried and tried to get the resetter to work and it wouldn't. So then I was downloading resetters that weren't from ProColor. And then finally, I reached out to ProColor. Now, their hours, because they're in a different country, are different than our hours. And so what I did was I reached out to them on Skype. And the guy that's my contact, he set up a Skype message board, so to speak. It was just a group message between me, him, and about nine other support staff. And what I assume is whichever support staff can get to it first, that's who I got. In my case, his name was Jack or P. Jack or something like that. So he tried, he, so I had to let him take remote control of my computer. I didn't have to, but I couldn't do anything. And when he was using the file off of this, it also gave him an error message. It wasn't working. I tried it at least 10 times. And so he tried it, there was an error message. So he ended up installing a new resetter and it reset perfectly, it's super easy. There's just a few steps to it. And so that was late last night. So then I wanna show you what it looks like when you don't print for a week, okay? That was the whole long story of telling you that. But I asked him, is this support something that you provide to all your customers? And he said, yes, every customer that buys a printer and so if you have a DTF machine and you're having problems with it, reach out to whoever you got it from and hopefully they have some support like that that can help you because these things are fairly new and none of us are really experts on them. And so I just thought that was an excellent support that they provided and that they provide to their customers. Okay, super long story. After he fixed so that the ink pad was reset and I could print again. The first print I did, well, let me show you, uh, okay, let me show you the last one I did, which still wasn't perfect. But with DTF, so there's the ink through the film. And I didn't powder any of these because they weren't good enough to powder. But the back of it should look pretty darn white. So you can see that's a white layer behind it so that if you put it on a black shirt or whatever, it still pops. So that was my fourth print. But here's what it started out as. I wanted to see what it would look like. And so here's the back side of my first print. And you can see a little bit of white came out at the very beginning. And that was it. And I had run one print head cleaning before I did this. And so I shouldn't have been printing so large, but I was. So that was a waste. But that was my first print after one print head cleaning. I did another print head cleaning, which on this machine, um, for print head cleanings only, there's other maintenance, but for print head cleanings only, there's a button on here that you push, hold it down three seconds, and it goes through a print head cycle, and it takes somewhere around a minute. I haven't timed it. I have timed the shaking system. That is right out a minute. So I did a, a second print head cleaning, and it still looked bad. It really didn't look any better than the first one. And I didn't even get that little bit of white. Hey, a little bit. Nope. I really didn't get any white at the top. So I did. And I put notes on these. I did two more print head cleans, which take about a minute to each. This was my third print. So I did two back to back and then I printed again. Much better. And then I did one more. And that's what I got. 
So if you do not print for a week, you're not going to get great prints until you go through some maintenance like that. The other couple things that I've had to do is um, inside there, they're called dampers. It's basically little cartridges inside that store that your ink comes into and kind of sits in. And I was having problems with one of my white dampers not holding pressure. And so it was letting air in there. And so the white wasn't printing really well. So I had to switch out one white damper, which really wasn't bad. And it seems like there was one other small thing, but I can't remember that, what that was. So if you're thinking about it, the DTF machine, there is some maintenance. You're going to have some issues that you need to fix, but you're going to get really good at understanding printers. Okay. So let's go ahead and start with doing a couple of DTF shirts. I got a couple of little shirts for a couple of girls, and these are actually next level. They're called Ideal T by Next Level. My understanding from, I think I was on Delonda's live, and she, was it her? Yeah, I think, or maybe Angel B. I think it was Angel B. She got a whole bunch of shirts, including sweatshirts, for like $86, a lot. A lot of sweat hoodies and t-shirts. And one brand you could get there, which she didn't get, was Next Level. And so I found this at the Dollar Tree store today. So I think it's a really cute color, kind of a gray putty color. And I got two of them the same size because these are going to be for the same girl. Okay. So, um, no barb. I have sucked my ink through the cartridge or the, the damper. Maybe I should have sucked it out the back also, but I've never done, I've never had to do that. Damper equals an ink cartridge weighing room. That's right, because your ink is sitting on the side of the machine in a continuous feed, and then it comes into that damper, and that's the little waiting room for it to go through the, the tube to print. I like that. So I was in a town about an hour away today for a meeting, and then I went into their Dollar Tree and found these. That was about all they had, but I thought these were really cute. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to print an image. And let me grab what I do with my paper. Oh, I put it where it goes. Okay, so my printer is the small pro colored printer. And I'll try to start watching the chat more. I'm sorry that I haven't been. So, and Barb, hey, hey, Lemonheads. Hey, Sylvia. I think I said hi to you. You're saying hi to other people, aren't you? But anyone that I missed, thank you so much for being here. Um, hey, Tom Sales. But I typically use Yalmation film. I have no problems with it. I like it. And so I stick with it. My printer is the smallest printer that you can get from them. Is a smallest printer ideal? No, but I make it work. And so the size is A4. And the dimensions are 8.3 inches wide by 11.7 inches tall. And so there is a print side and a back side. They are kind of hard to distinguish. You would, you get used to it and you know after a while, but see how this one says print side? That means that what's facing up is the print side. So I only take one sheet out of time so I don't mess that up. Oh, your Dollar Tree has all different colors. I wish I wish ours did. Okay, so I'm sorry I'm gonna have my back to you. A DTF printer, uh, the ones, all of them that I've seen, they require a PC, not a Mac. The RIP software works on a PC, not a Mac. So I have this really cheap computer that I got that feels like plastic that I just leave here by the printer. So I already have one of the images set up to print, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start that. Okay. All right. Thank you, Barb. Okay. Now you'll see it takes quite a while to print images, especially when they have a lot of things on them. And right now it's actually going through what's called the RIP process. I know you can't see that. I do have a video on it. Oh, Deb, we were talking about t-shirts. So my Dollar Tree, well, it's not even my Dollar Tree, it was an hour away. 
but I got a couple of shirts there today from the Dollar Tree store. And so was it Sylvia? Somebody was saying that their Dollar Tree has all different colors, which ours doesn't. So it goes through this, what's called rip process, which means it's processing how to print that ink on the back. And like I, ha I tell it to print two layers on the back. And then it's 72% through the rip process. Sometimes it takes less time. Sometimes it takes a little bit more. When it's through that rip process, it's going to start printing out. And it's probably going to take about five minutes. So I got things something to talk about for five minutes. Um, after you print it out, you're going to take your image and you're going to put what's called DTF powder on the ink. And you do have to mirror your images when you print. Basically, kind of a rule of thumb is, is if what you're printing or cutting has to be flipped over to go on your shirt, then you have to reverse the image. If what you're putting on your shirt is picked up with a mask or something and put down like some of the pattern vinyls, some of the pattern HTVs, you actually pick those up with a mask and put them on, which I hate. Um, but those you don't mirror because you're not flipping it over. You're doing setups. Oh, like setting up for dinners and stuff, not like crunches. Those would be sit-ups, right? Let's say precious pieces, you got energy. You have energy. Hey, Starla. So it is printing out, and if you've watched my videos, I like to open the lid and put the camera in there so that you see it. But I always like to peek to make sure that white is looking good. And it is looking great. And so I'm going to get ready for the next step. And the next step is to put DTF powder on it. Now this comes in a bag. Let me show you. It comes in a bag like this. And what I did is, because I didn't like trying to dump the excess powder back in there, I got this container at the Dollar Tree store. I don't know that they have them anymore. Somebody on my, I'm not sure I said that right. I'm not sure they have these containers anymore. Someone on one of my videos said they could not find them. But I got it at the Dollar Tree store, and I like that it's somewhat opaque. So sun isn't getting through to it. And, but you can see a little bit through there. And so... What I like to do, but I was making shirts for my husband last night, so it's probably fine. But typically, well before I do my shirt, I would really shake this up to break up any clumps in it. I'm not going to do that right now because I don't think there's any clumps in it. No major clumps. No sit-ups for you. Okay. <laughs> hey, AC, welcome to the live. Okay, so now i got to go into that room behind me and get a glove because I, oh wait, it's probably down here. Oh, it is. Okay, so I have a DTF glove because I don't want my hands really in the powder. So I put a glove on. 755, you're so silly. Telling everybody to put the corn nugget image on. 755 hates corn nuggets. And I like them. Not corn nuts, corn nuggets. All right, so that's printing out. I have my DTF powder. And then a lot of the times I'll just use a piece of butcher paper on my videos. But more recently, I started using this little container. And I got this at Walmart. I remember that now. And here in a minute, you'll see that I just put my image down there with the white facing up and I powder it and then tilt it back and forth. And then also, we are going to cook or cure the powder. So it's powdery, you want it to melt, and you want it to become a solid glue. So just like on the back of rhinestones, that's kind of what it's like. On the back of rhinestones, there is a glue, but it is solidified. So you're going to heat this powder so that it melts, but it solidifies back together so it's not rubbing off on your shirt. So I need to turn my oven on. And I never did change that to Fahrenheit. I just leave it at Celsius. And I do it at 120 degrees Celsius for 150 seconds. Now, I don't really smell things coming from mine. Some people 
say they do. Um, so I would, if you're in here doing very much DTF, I would wear a mask. Um, but we're not going to do that right now. Okay. Do as I say, not as I do. Right. All right. So we look like we are about two thirds done with that. And Gail would be a comedy if I tried to also. Hey, Carla, Thomas Anders. So maybe what I ought to do is start my next, or maybe we'll just do one shirt tonight. I don't know. We'll see, because I still have my, my rhinestones to do. But I think I'll just get the next one set up so I could start having that print out. And my back's going to be too. So y'all keep each other entertained for a minute. Precious pieces you can, <laughs> precious pieces you can do more comedy or something like that. Or Delon, if you're still in here, say some funny stuff, okay? Now, when that comes out, though, I'm going to have to go ahead and powder it. And what I read just recently is wait one minute, about one minute before you powder it. So they want you to powder it immediately. They want about one minute. Hey, Latonia. Oh, Gail, it's a... Okay, it's done. So I'll just do it. A corn nugget is a deep fried ball of yumminess goo. So a corn nugget has corn and kind of a creamy, I don't know if it has cheese in it or not. And then that is breaded and it's deep fried. And so it's one of those, you know, foods that aren't great for you. Kind of like mozzarella sticks or other fried things like that. But I truly like them. Hi, Wanda. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny, Delonda. She said something funny. All right. All right, all right, all right. Okay, so in here, and I'm stalling to let that kind of settle in for a minute. I just have, you know, when you go to a restaurant, and you might have a takeout salad and they put the dressing in a little condiment cup with the lid on it. I just keep a condiment cup in here and I use it over and over. So what I did was I printed three little cows at the top. And I don't remember what kind of cow this is, but they're sure popular and it's cute. This was a Valentine's Day image on Creative Fabrica, but I don't think it has to be Valentine's just to have heart shaped glasses. And so I'll tell you in a minute why I have those three shapes at the top. Well, first of all, you could use them on a sleeve or something, but that's not why I did them. I got to think here for a minute before I go into that discussion. All right, so I have a lot of powder on it. You can probably see that in the camera. And you're not going to waste it because you're going to put the excess right back in here. And so I take the design and... Oh, 755, I see your little warnings. She doesn't want anybody to have, let's see, does it say X tool and a DTF printer? And she wants, uh, she wants somebody to send it to her so that I don't go to jail. Okay, so I go back and forth about six times. I always lose track and I probably usually go about eight times. I'm going to assume that's close to six times. So we're going to go ahead and hold the image up. That excess powder falls down into the container and then I tap it and I smack it. All right. Now on the back, you have your white ink and some sugar looking very, very fine sugar. And I just heard the thermostat of this make a little plunk when you know your heat press is ready. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay it in there for 150 seconds. Now it says 116 and it's supposed to be 120, but you know how thermostats, you get there and then they shut the heating element off and so it goes down and then it goes up and then it goes down. So let's go ahead and put this in. And you might be able to hear that. It's not real loud, but it, there is a noise. And so then I just knock all the powder to the corner and dump it right back in this container. Or if I'm using butcher paper, 
I just fold it, get it to the middle, and dump it in. This is a little bit more messy than folding the paper because the whole thing is kind of sticking out over. So there might be, oh, yeah, there's a little bit. There might be some small pieces on the table. And so then I'll clean that up with a little wet wipe. Okay, I see people saying hey to Eve. So hey, Eve. All right, I'm just going to set this to the side. Take my glove off. And I tried to remember to bring everything over I'd need. I didn't bring the wet wipes over, so let me grab that. And a lot of the things that are in my craft room, we just, we built. So this table, this top came from Home Depot. It was an unfinished top. I didn't really want it to have a stain on it because nothing else in here has a stain on it. So I just put, I think I did four coats of polycrylic, which is basically a water-based um, urethane. And I'm trying to think of what Minwax it was. Oh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, let me grab a paper towel. So when I'm on wives and I say I have to go get my rhinestones or this, that, or the other, I'm typically going into that room right there. And so I guess the downside of doing crafting over on this side is when I need to turn the light on there, you're going to see it's kind of a mess. I need to get that cleaned up. Okay, so we are down to one second. I'm just going to turn it off so it'll be quiet. There's another button you can push, but I'm done for now. You get this little suction cup, and you're not going to use it to lift your paper. You're going to use it to slide your paper, or not paper, slide your film. Okay, that looks very good. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to tell. See how that looks shiny? That's the glue that melted, and then it's already, it's solid, so it's perfectly fine. I'm going to let that sit while I get my shirt ready. Now, I don't ever have two heating things going at one time because they pull a whole lot from your electrical system. So I have my old fashioned heat, um, heat press, the first one I bought right over here. I don't know, you probably won't be able to see it. If I pull it too far, it's a swing away. I won't be able to swing it away. But it's just a really inexpensive one I got off of Amazon when I first started doing a lot of this. So I, like many people, bought the Cricut Easy Press, and then I realized it really wasn't. As Delon says, it's a big iron, it's not really a heat press. So then I got this. So I'm gonna turn that on, and last night I was making shirts for my husband, because he's going on a camping trip with a bunch of guys. And so it is already set for the time and temp that I need. So with this, I'm gonna do 325 for 15 seconds. Then I'm going to take it off, peel, something's going crazy with my cameras, peel the back off to reveal the image, and then I'm going to heat it again with a piece of parchment paper. And you want to use parchment paper, not butcher paper, because parchment paper is not going to stick to that ink. All right, hey, Lena Doyle Crafting. People talking about shenanigans. Hey, Naomi. Thanks for being here. Hey, Banana. Hey, Gigi Love. If I missed anyone, I'm sorry. Uh, feel free to chat again down below. Let's see, Marta got her rhinestones. They're beautiful. Yeah, so I think tonight I'm going to use... I used this a while back because I saw Patrice use some of these. 
I'm going to use um, rose gold and volcano chrome. And then for the bottom of the ombre, I'm going to use olivine. olivine. And so when I change the camera, you'll be able to see a little bit more about that. Hopefully I have enough of the stones and the ice chips for this design. I think I do. I'm pretty sure I do. And then I'm going to put it on a super, super dark navy, uh, navy blue shirt. So it's almost black, but it's navy blue. All right. I should have turned this heat. Well, I couldn't turn the heat press on because that oven was going. This heat press is one of those that takes quite a while to heat up. So my HTV run, it heats up really fast. This one, we're only up to 126 degrees. And so we have a ways to go with that. So maybe what I'll do now is I'll go ahead and I'll start showing you what I'm gonna use with the rhinestones. Now, let me go ahead and change, let me add the stage. And then I'll show, whoops, that's not what I want. Let me show you a little bit closer view of this image. So here's the side that'll show on the shirt. Very, very cute. If you watch me, you know this camera is pretty desaturated, so it is more vibrant than that. And then here's the back side, and see the slippery looking stuff? It's dry. It's not going to come off. But that's the glue, just like you have on the black on the back of your hot fix rhinestones. Now I told you that I was going to let you know why. I put these three cows up here. And I had extra room, so I might as well put something. But the real reason why I like to put something, if I have room, up here is because sometimes when you print out prints on your DTF printer, just like, well, no, that one was the opposite. Okay, let me show you this one. Okay, so I showed you this earlier. This was after two more head cleanings. So I did a head cleaning, printed, didn't work well. Second head clean, printed, didn't work well. So then I did two more cleanings, and here's what I got. And hopefully you can see that at the very top of the image, see how there's a lot, at the top of the image, see how there's a lot less white? And if you haven't printed for a while, that can easily happen because the white hasn't quite caught up yet. And so I like to put something really small up at the top of my sheet to get that white flowing. And so that's really why I put them up there, but I thought those could be pretty cute on a sleeve or a pocket. I don't know, those could go anywhere. They're so adorable. But let me show you. So here's the color it looks in this camera. And then if I put my front camera on, you can see it's really prettier than what it looked like there. Hey, Laura E. Thanks, Donzel. I think it's pretty cute too. I cannot remember what these cows are called, but a lot of people are doing designs with them because of their fluffy hair. And it's a real type of cow. Of course, this is a, a cartoonish one. But if you know what this cow is called, remind me, because I just cannot remember. Highland cow. Thank you, Deb G. Yes, so they're called Highland cows. Now, you can store your cured DTF prints. You don't have to use them right away. How long can you store them for? I don't know. Um, I'm sure months, but I honestly don't know how long you can store this for. So... That's it. Um, now, another thing, let me think. I was going to say something that Patrice told us <coughs> a long time ago on her DTF journey, and now I can't remember what it was. If I think of it, I'll let you know. Okay, so you have some in Council Bluffs, Iowa. Very cool. 755, I thought you were just saying it's a cow. It's a, a Highland cow. Oh, Carrie, I didn't even realize that was you that said that. Hope you're doing well. Okay, we're up to 261. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what I'm going to make. All right, 
hopefully that landed right side up. Yes. Um, okay, so I'm going to make Patrice's With God All Things Are Possible. And so the one that I'm making has an ombre in it. I believe she made one design where you have outline, you have the outline, and then you have the inside that's just one additional layer. But I like the ombre, and so I cut out the ombre one. So not only do I have the outline with word with and possible, which you can tape off and you could do all different colors in those, but I think I'm going to stick with the same color for this side. And then the top, I'm going to do, which one do I want to do? For the top, for the top, for the top. For the top, I'm going to do the Volcano Chrome. I think that's what it's called. Yes. For the bottom, I'm going to do the Olivine, this one. And then for All Things Are, I'm going to go back to the Volcano Chrome. We're going to see how it looks. And then the shirt that I'll use, like I said, it's a super dark. See, I have a black sweatshirt on. You can see this is a really, really dark navy blue, very close to black. So that's what I'm going to use. Okay, we're up to 324, 325. So we're ready for the shirt. The first thing that I want to do is I want to go ahead and pre-press it, just like you do for rhinestones, heat transfer vinyl. You want to remove the moisture. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and press this for the 15 seconds. And this thing likes to beep at me until I acknowledge it. It's a safety feature. Now, you should use a lint roller on anything you do. And I don't have one in here. I wonder if I can get back in 15 seconds. Because the measles has a few, a few flock dots on it, but that'll be okay. Okay, go ahead and set that aside so you can see what I'm doing on the table. Hey, Carol. All right, let's see. That's not a safety feature, which it, oh, it is too, it is a safety feature. 755, I thought you were getting on to me for running in the craft room. Hey, Penny, you do have to work tonight, Carol, I'm sorry. I'm glad you're on here for a little bit. Let's see what she was saying. I don't think they are coming in Texas. <laughs> right. Okay, so, go ahead and put the shirt down. And then with DTF, you don't need heat resistant tape. If you are doing, if you're placing your design on your heat press and your press comes straight down, you don't need heat, heat resistant tape. But I'm going to be moving my shirt so I could show it over here. And so I'm just going to put the tape on it so that I don't have to put the image back where I want it when I get there. Because the um, DTF, as soon as you start getting heat on it, it's going to stick to your shirt. That's why you really don't need tape, but I like to use it when I'm having to move my design. Hey, Mrs. Parker. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fold up so that those horns come together and pinch it at the top and pinch it down at the bottom. So that I can kind of see if that's going straight. And, oh, Chris, I wish you were in here. I'm not using my ruler. You'd be so proud of me. All right, let's move it down a little bit. You don't, with a v-neck, you don't want to go down three inches or it's going to be really low. And so I'm just going to place it right there. That is cute. So just enough tape so that when I take my design over there, it's not going to shift. So I'm going to put one piece on the bottom and we're going to call that good. Okay, let's go ahead and press this. Okay. 
Now, I always like to get the collar of my shirt. Oh, hi. I like to get the collar of my shirt off the press because I don't know if you've experienced it where your collar is under the press and then all of a sudden it has a sheen on it, like the fibers kind of somewhat, not melted, but they just have a bad sheen on it because of all the heat and the pressure on the little collar. So I make sure that's off. Thanks. Thanks, Eve. Oh, I see. <laughs> That's right, Chris. I don't need a ruler tonight. Well, maybe when I do the rhinestone shirt, I might. I don't know. We'll see. That got her out of the bushes, didn't it, Sheila? Okay, so now this is going to cool down for a little bit. It's a really, really hot. And... I have a tile over here that I use for a lot of things. So I'm just going to set that on it, help cool it off just a little bit more quickly. Oh, I missed a comment about a dog. Sheila, what did you say about your dog? Yep. <laughs> They're pretty tasty. Yeah, I don't even know if this kind of cow is bred for beef. I don't know. They're just cute. Maybe they're bred for putting their babies in petting zoos or something. All right, so let's feel it. Perfect. Set this over here. I should just put it back where it came from. But let's go ahead. And what I want to do is I want it. Well, it's already coming up. It's very easy. So I want to look at it, make sure it's really stuck down. It is. So let's just pull it off. Really, really cute. Now, somebody in a chat recently said they keep their DTF sheets, the ones that are used, and then when they have some rhinestone flock dots that are stuck in the flock, they stick them down on these because these aren't going to tear. And so I started saving my film, my used film, so I could do that. So. <laughs> Naomi Chris doesn't cut slack. She's she's just she goes for the jugular. And I love it. Um, so I don't know, were any of you the person that said this? Hey she'll need a Nicole. Welcome. Were any of you the one that said keep this for your DTF or your uh, block dots? If so, thank you. Those are the types of things that we share that are so helpful. Okay, so here's this cute little cow. But I'm not done because this is super, super smooth, very smooth. Let me, again, remember this is desaturated, but I want you to see it up close and personal. It is very, very nicely on top of the shirt. It's adhered really well. That's super slippery. And so it feels like a very thin, piece of printable vinyl on your shirt. Not a thick one at all, but a very thin layer of printable vinyl on your shirt. I want it to get down deeper into the shirt. And so, just like most people, it is what's suggested is go ahead and do a second press and use parchment paper on top of it. And I wish there was a way that you could really we need not only smell-a-vision, we need feel-a-vision or whatever. I wish you could feel the difference because it does make a huge difference when you use this second, when you do the second press with this parchment paper. So I do mine for another 15 seconds. Leslie, it is adorable, isn't it? Thanks, Penny. This is Delanda's design. And it is very, very pretty and lean. And of course, it's the rhinestones from Baby's Booty. And the buy-in has started already this month. It opened up a couple days early. And so I haven't gone into the buy-in. Eve, am I right? Did it really open up early? Okay, let cool off before I put my hand on there. Thanks, Carol. Okay, so now 
it just it doesn't have that super slippery feel and it took away a lot of that gloss and i don't want my printed images to look glossy so this feels really really nice it's hard to distinguish with your finger when you move from the fibers of the shirt to the DTF. Now, I will say I am not a huge fan of a big solid piece of DTF because you get none of the shirt in between. And I like to have, I just don't like to have super big solid things. I like so that some of your shirt is coming through in areas, but I think that's really, really cute. Let's take a look at it. All right, so there it is, all done. Very cute. I think this girl's going to love that. I don't know if we're going to have time for that second one or not. We're going to go ahead and start blinging for now. And then we'll see if anybody wants to stick around and can do it. But maybe we'll wait and we'll do it another time. Now, since I'm over here, um, rather than going back and forth between my HTV run, which I really love for rhinestones, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and preheat my shirt so that I can loosen up the pressure of the heat press. And I'm sorry you can't really see the heat press, but if I put it over here, I can't swing it away. And so I'm going to go ahead and preheat this so I get the right pressure because this shirt is a lot thicker than that last shirt that I used. And then add rhinestones on top of it, it's gonna be thicker yet. Okay, that feels pretty good. So we'll go ahead and preheat that for about 15 seconds. Okay, I came in on chunky butt, so I'm not, <laughs> I'm not sure what chunky butt is. Shaylee, you talking about me? <laughs> All right, so that sure is heated up and ready to go. So let's start brushing in our template. I'm going to start with the width, the outline of God, and the word possible. And let's just do this for now. Or... <laughs> Let's see, have you ever tried a white cotton shirt as the cover for the second press? It really, oh, Deb, that's a good idea. Wow. Yeah, so I think that felt great, but I've never heard of that. So some white cotton, put that over. So do you do two presses still? You do your regular DTF print, you show it peel and reveal and then you do the white shirt next or do you do parchment then the white shirt i love that idea though okay so um shanita nicole what i do with the multiple screens is so i have my computer over here and it is feeding up to my webcam and number one i i mute it but that's not enough you also have to plug in something to the sound jack and I can even cut this off if I wanted to and just have something in that jack that's how you keep from having any feedback and sometimes I forget to mute it <laughs> and I get terrible feedback and then I just I mute it okay so the white shirt second Deb I love that idea and I thank you so much for putting that in here I'm gonna try that soon all right, so for this outline, you're welcome. For the outline and the word with and possible, I'm going to use these. Um, do I want to use it for the word possible? Do I want to have possible kind of pink? Maybe I'll wait. I'll wait on the word possible. because I can always have it this color. This way I'm not committed to having it this color. Okay, so, I don't know. I really feel like 
I'm going to do the whole thing in these. If I have enough, let's see. If I don't, we're not going to do the whole thing in this. <laughs> <laughs> so he's asking if Ren is in the bushes. Renna, come out and play. So I don't know how the weather's been at your where you live, but either Monday or Tuesday, I can't remember which. When I get up in the morning, I always ask A L E X A, which I have to spell because I have one in here, and I don't want to set all the years off. I always ask her, you know, what the forecast is for the day, or I just say what's the temperature for the day. And however I word it, she'll usually tell me what the temperature is, what the high will be, and what the low will be. So either Monday or Tuesday morning, I asked her, and I don't remember what the temperature was at the time, but it was like 7 in the morning. And she said the high for the day was going to be 80, I don't remember what she said, 84 maybe. And the low for the day was going to be 21. And I was like, how do you have a 60 plus degree swing in one day? So... In the morning, it's cold, and so you, you go to work in clothes that keep you warm, including in the building. And then in the afternoon, when I get off work, it's hot, or it was hot that day. And then maybe five or six at night, you saw the clouds rolling in, and the wind was picking up. And of course, in Kansas, because I'm not in the flat, flat part of Kansas, but it's not like... A lot of places where maybe you live. Okay, please be enough stones. And so the wind, we have wind, but not like western Kansas, but we have decent wind here. And so it dropped. So it's going to drop 60 degrees from the eight. It ended up getting up to 83 and it got down to 21. And the next morning it's 20. But how in the world do you plan for a day with a 60 degree swing? I wish that, that was crazy. And how do you get 83 degrees when a month ago it was negative 3? 48 with up to 35 mile per winds here in Texas yesterday. Yeah, that wind. What brand is your DTF printer? So this DTF printer is a pro colored printer. And I was talking about the really, really... It's, it's the only time I've had to use their service, and I was so impressed with how they helped me, and because I couldn't fix it myself, because the file that I had on the little zip drive that they sent me, or the thumb drive, didn't work for the printer, so they installed a new one remotely on my computer, and they went in, and they fixed my issue with my, basically, it's like a waste tank, the, the waste tank that it, they thought was full, or that the printer thought was full. Of course, because it, it sends all the waste ink out the back into a holding container, the ink pad or waste tank, whatever you want to call it, really wasn't full. So you just have to trick it into, whoops, get back up there. You just have to trick it into clearing itself and then it works again. But it is a pro-colored printer. And I, I actually do have a link to pro-colored in the video description. And that is, as I say in the description, is an affiliate link. And so I would never, I wouldn't suggest anyone buy something they really don't want, can't afford, don't need. Um, but if you're in the market for it, I do have an affiliate link. And if you spend so much, you get another $80 off whatever the price is. So check them out if you're interested. I do know they're going to have... So they have this huge monster one that, I think Angel B has this one, that um, it prints and then it runs it through the shaker, the powder shaker, and then the excess falls off on itself and then it runs it through a curing oven part. And sometime in March, those are going to go on sale. But they're pricey. I mean, you're talking over $4,000. Whereas, I don't know how much mine is right now, but it's Maybe $1,300, but again, it does not print real big. So you have to think about, do I really want one? Do I really need one? If I feel like I need one and I can justify it, 
really how much can I justify spending if I'm not using it to make money on shirts, you know? Because a lot of us are just hobby crafters. A lot of us don't sell a lot of things. And I still spend money on stuff because crafting truly is a therapy for me. Um, not a, an official or formal therapy, but it is something that as an empty nester without a lot of things going on in my life anymore because it used to be going to the kids' games, going to the kids' banquets, going here, going there, traveling to this town for this game, you know, going to debate tournaments or uh, forensics tournaments, all that stuff. And now it's just Tim and I, and I used to take care of my mom, and then after she passed, I just had so much time on my hands and too much time to sit around and think for me wasn't good. And so that's when I really, really started getting back into crafting. I'd never been in crafting huge, but I used to love the scrapbook, the old fashioned scrapbook when the kids were little. And then when I was young, my grandma taught me to crochet. So I liked to do that. And I liked to, when I was a kid, do the loom thing. Um, but, you know, really think about should I be spending this money or not? Because we get on here with our shiny toys and all that, and it makes, you know, people want things, and maybe it's not something that's necessary. Maybe the right thing is to buy DTF transfers instead. Now, I love my printer, and I don't want to get rid of it, but I also want to be, you know, sensible in what I spend my money on. But I spend enough money on crafting things. But again, I don't have kids at home anymore. They're out of college now. And so that's kind of where I put my excess money. I sure don't buy clothes. You guys see me in sweatshirts and t-shirts and jeans and sweats. And I just don't spend money. Okay, I see one stone that I don't love the looks of it. So I'm going to take it off and throw it in the trash and replace it. All right. So Chris and Jesse, let me see. Let's start with this one. You guys see any double stones? Yes. That's right, Sheila. It is a form of therapy for many of us. And Sylvia, I agree, it's so relaxing. So, so relaxing. And Naomi says, crafting feeds my soul. And Naomi's a big sewer also. She does other things. She's done some great t-shirts that I've seen, but she's a big sewer, seamstress. So Sharon said, I just told someone that today, crafting keeps someone from getting hurt and me going to jail. <laughs> then Sharon, you, you keep crafting. We don't want you in jail. You can't have all these craft toys in jail. Well, maybe you can, I don't know. I saw this crazy guy on TV saying how prison wasn't hard and you can do anything you want there. Blah, blah, blah. And I literally, in my head, I was thinking, I wonder if you can have craft supplies there in your cell. I kind of doubt it. Oh, you're welcome, Naomi. Okay. Get you out of your tube. All right. So I think, okay, so Chris says it looks good to her. And for anyone that hasn't been here a lot, Chris watches on a 72 inch TV. And so she can really see this stuff. I think it looks good too. So I am going to cut a new piece of KTM mask. And this KTM mask, that's what I figured, Gail. This KTM mask comes from Heat Transfer Warehouse and I didn't put a link to this in the video description. I should do better. I should remember to do those things. I tried. I put my link to my Etsy shop. Since this is Patrice's design, I put Patrice's store link. I put Baby's booty store link. 
and the Pro Colored link. I think that's what I put. Oh, and I also put links to the two designs I was going to do. So the Highland Cow is linked in the video description as well. And if you have a Creative Fabric account, you know you can download it for free. Okay, I'm going to do this. It's going to be kind of loud. Okay, wait. Chris said something about the G. Check left side of the G. It's hard to see that color. Okay. Yeah, I think it's okay, Chris, but thank you. Yeah, it's hard to see with this color on the pink, isn't it? And then with the table being kind of brown, and the stones are kind of brown, it is. Hang hey, on, Daniels. <laughs> right, Naomi. <laughs> Sharon, so that's motivation also to stay out of prison, right? Can't take my toys with me. Thanks, Donzel. All right, let's see. Is this, oh! Y'all, I hit that. I let it fall and it hit it a little bit. So now I have to fix these stones. Just love it when that kind of thing happens. <laughs> oh my goodness. Probably gonna be just as fast to use my little, my little stone picker upper. So I'm gonna try to look at the chat more. My TV keeps getting bigger in size. Everyone seems to mention the sizes. Oh, it's only 70 inches. I know. I think in one of the lives, maybe it was Patrice. Somebody said Chris and her like 80 some inch TV. Uh, hopefully these come out the right number. It's kind of like when you get something and you have screws to put in it and you have an extra screw and you're like, uh oh, where'd that come from? My rhinestones should go back in the same numbers they came out, right? Unless some of them got knocked further off on the table. Okay. So where's those last two stones at? There's one. And I don't know where the other one is. And you know, I am not good at swiping my fingers over these like a lot of people are. So I just got to get down here and kind of look this way. Okay, I don't know where. <laughs> I don't know where that last stone is. So we're just going to get another one out. It probably fell on the floor, right? And that's what we're going to say. It's on the floor somewhere. I crap for your safety. That's funny. So, Sharon, would that shirt work for you? I crap for your safety. Okay, you think it's in the middle part of the O? All right, I don't see it in there. I don't see it in there. I think, I think we're good. Now, I should have cut my mask, the KTM mask, a little bit bigger, I think. And, yeah, I should have cut it, I should have cut it bigger. So, we're going to save this piece for another day. Oh, okay, Chris, so I already fixed it. We're going to save that for another day. I'm not going to throw it away. Well, on most designs, so it will fit. Hi, Mylene. So this time we're going to go, go big. And this time we're going to try not to drop it. Oh yeah, I went big already. Right. I don't like having it larger than, I mean that much larger than the flap because it sticks to the table. But I'd rather it stick to the table, I can deal with that, than mess up my stuff. So, why am I so nervous this time? I do this every week. 
All right, I have a stone, a couple of stones that came out up here. And so I'm just going to find something to shove those back into the hole. There we go. Maybe now I'll find that extra stone, right? Okay, I think that looks good. Okay, let's see if they all come up because this is that ultra sticky, ultra sticky flock. I decided I should start using some of that up because I've been cheating with my old flock lately. Okay, I had a few stones that didn't come up. Oh, I found an extra stone. I could feel it was thicker than what it was supposed to be. So maybe that's where it went to, or maybe I already had an extra stone in it. Okay, I have a stone that's out of place. Try this again. Hey, Valerie. Defiant stones, that's right. Okay, Dems is in here somewhere then. Hey, Dems. Okay, that looks good. So, let's go ahead and bring the shirt back over and press this first layer down. I kind of like being on this side of the room because I have a big table over there that I can just walk and put stuff on. I know it's kind of a boring background, but, and tell me, oh, there's a stone on the table. That's probably it. So this back here is something that I made. It's just fabric from Joann's and then it has a batting like material behind it that I also got at Joann's and then just a thin, thin pieces of wood as a frame. And I have this over here to help with the echo in the room. Because usually I'm on that side and I'm talking this way. And so that helps with the echo. Is this hot? Nope. So now that that's behind me, does it sound like I'm in a tin can any more than usual? Does it sound about the same as usual? What do you guys think about this view? I can always, if I decide I want to stay over here, I can always move my sign over here and put that thing over there, but I don't want to have, oh wait, what am I doing? Chris, keep me in line. That's not what I wanted to do. I want to put my design on my shirt. Sounds fine. Okay, good. Yeah, Naomi, I like that fabric too. At first, I was thinking about putting something like bright and wild over here because I'd be looking at it, and then I was like, you know, this is a pretty muted colored room. And so I decided just to stay with something light and neutral. Okay. So this is a heavy, heavy design because it has a lot of stuff in it. So I'm going to put my G and my D together and try to find about where the center is. Keep my eye on that and then just drop it down to my shirt. Then, you know what we're going to do? We're going to get the ruler out and we're going to measure because that's how I do. Ha! Eve, I am a cougar. My husband is five months younger than me. I'm a cougar. Seven inches to that side. And I can tell it's not going to be set. Oh, it is. It's almost seven inches this side. I'm just barely off. So we're going to move it over a little bit. I want to pick it up. I don't want to just drag it because if you drag it, you can knock your stones. Yes, Tim is seven, five. Okay, I was born in May and he was born in October. I think that's, I think I'm five months older than he is. Now, I feel like there's an extra stone in there still. Nope. Okay, now I can tell it's crooked. And I can't deal with that. I cannot deal with that. 
So this is Delanda's design on the shirt I'm wearing, and then this is Patrice's design. And it goes way uphill, and I can tell it. So I'm gonna measure to the bottom of my shirt. It's about nine and a half inches. And <laughs> this one's like 10 and a half inches. So I don't have this like spatial awareness thing. I, I, I don't know straight. Like when we were plotting out how we wanted to put this little garage on our property, which we never put on our property, Tim would have me walk off with this um, string, this pink string from like a thing you put into the ground. I can't think of the name of it. A stake that you put in the ground. I don't think I really changed it much. And he'd have me walk with it. And I thought I was walking straight. And he's like, you are way angled. So I don't do well unless I measure. <laughs> That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Oh, you're off for the weekend, Carol. That's great. Okay, so pull this side down, lift this side. And what is that, my third time? I only get 15 attempts, right? Can we stick around if I do 15 attempts? Nine and a quarter. That's good. It was almost exact. Okay. Okay, one more. One more. Measure over here. A little over seven and a half. Oh. Y'all, yeah, it's not in the middle. I can't handle that. I'm oh, sorry. I'm sorry, I'm so weird. I need to be like you. She's just like, it's my shirt. I'm doing it. She does her hands and they go on great. But you see how she like, sometimes she'll actually play stones with her hands. She's got those magic touch, the magic rhinestone touch. Okay, we're going to hope this is good enough. Let's do to the P. That's about seven. That's... Not quite right, but I know you don't want to stick around for 15 attempts. Okay, one more, right? One more. One more try. Come on. Hopefully, 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 move it over a little bit. Hopefully, I don't know if it did, but we're trying. I don't think it did. I think we're in the exact. Nope, we're not. We're not. We're not. We got a lump under there, so pull the lump out. Okay, we're doing it. Not even gonna measure. I can measure after the show and cry. So you're left-handed, but you can't draw a straight. Wait, it moved. The chat moved. I'm only right and weed with my left hand. So, Kristen, you're ambidextrous. That wasn't a bus ticket. I was giving you a, a compliment, Eve. I wish I could do it that way. Yours always look great. Mine, mine was off by an entire inch. <laughs> All right. Oh, I didn't turn my heat up. Oh my goodness. This heat press gets hot. Now I can't remember if I'm supposed to be doing 340 or 350. Good thing she puts her instructions on here. 350. Okay. 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 Whew. So it's at 325 and I'm going to have to do another couple of presses. So should I try it and see if the stones stay down? Oh, you are a cougar. You're a super cougar. My mom was older than my dad too, but not by that far. Yeah. <laughs> 
He says, no, I just wear it shifted so it looks straight. So I did that one time and I was laughing with Patrice because she was like, just, you know, do this and it'll look straight. <laughs> okay, we're going to go ahead and press it for 15 seconds. Okay, Sheila, I might have to do that, but I'd rather just have it straight. I only got up to like four or five moves, not the 15. Oh, it's not counting down because it wasn't up to temperature. So this is one of those heat presses that if it is not up to the temperature you set it for, it's not going to start counting down. So I have no idea how long I pressed it. But I'm going to go slow, make sure they stay down. And they're staying down beautifully. And this color... Well, this dark shirt is really pretty. So this is rose gold. And here's what it looks like so far. It looks like I'm wearing copper pennies on the shirt. Tiny little copper pennies. Okay, it's not that crooked. I just don't know how to hold a shirt in front of a camera. So there it is so far. Super pretty. Turn head slightly and oh, all good. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and brush in part of the rest of it. So I'm going to do Volcano Chrome. Got something on my clock. Oh, I have a dot that didn't come out. It's stuck there. So I'm gonna do Volcano Chrome on the top and then all things are, and then I'm going to do my olivine or olivine on this part. But let's go ahead and remove. Let me show you what I'm talking about. See right here, it cut fine, but there's a flock dot still in there. There we go. I can see some of that nasty glue under there too. So hopefully my stones will come out okay. Alrighty, so I'm going to go ahead and tape off the middle section. And that way I can lay the stones down for the top half of God and the works at the bottom. because I'm only going with three colors. Maybe I should have gone with more, but I'm going with three. We'll see how it turns out. I think it'll be pretty. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and use this Volcano Chrome. Hey, m and Living and Cooking. Hope you're doing well. Thanks, Dee. Y'all. Mr. M, keep watching their show. It is amazing after having, he had strokes on both sides of the brain, had to be in the hospital for quite a while, and he's up walking. Just over the last three weeks, he's coming incredibly stronger, and he's doing great. I mean, he's tired, and he has a long, long recovery yet, but he's walking, he's talking, um, you can see that his humor is, he's coming, his humor is coming back, probably because he's not as exhausted as right afterwards, but check him out. She made some boba tea. Now I need some. All right. Yes, I'm glad he's coming along. Right, so I don't think I have nearly enough stones up here. And so if you're coming in, I'll show you here in just a few minutes the DTF shirt that I made. And we're going to make this shirt. And I think I'll hold off on that other DTF shirt because we've already been on here an hour and a half. So with it being the weekend, and Tim is occupied 
with his Jeep trails and camping with four or five other guys. I think it's four other guys. I am just going to craft all weekend. I should be cleaning all weekend, but I'm so far behind on videos that I want to do. And so I'm going to craft a little bit of cleaning, but mostly crafting. And I'm probably only going to leave the house on Sunday. I love days where I don't have to leave the house. That sounds so sad. All right. I love these stones. To me, they look like a... So they're volcano chrome, but they have all different colors in them, similar to like if you have rainbow stones or if you've been on here when I drank out of one of my tumblers that has pinks and greens and all that. I think it mimics that. Now, it's a little bit harder to know if some of my other circles didn't come out or didn't cut right because since this is an ombre print or an ombre cut, you may not discover an issue with like a stone being missing until you've pressed both, both layers. But that's okay because you can always go back and Put some stones back in and press again. Okay, what did Jeannie say? Crafting sounds better than... Yes! <laughs> that sounds a lot better than cleaning. I have not... Oh, my house is just a wreck. It really is. I have... And my mother became this way. I have no interest anymore in cooking or cleaning. None. I just want to craft and watch 48 hours, which is a weird combination, but it's the truth. I want to craft and I want to hang out on YouTube on everybody's lives and craft, eat. I got to eat too. You can tell I don't miss meals. So I want to craft, eat, watch YouTube, and watch 48 hours. That's what I'm going to do all weekend, except for Sunday. What'd she say? We ha Oh, you have mulching. Oh, my. Yeah, we need to do a lot of mulching out in our yard. Ugh. That's hard work. I used to enjoy that, too. I used to love, love being outside and doing all kinds of gardening and, and all that. Just have a one track mind now, crafting. Well, crafting, eating in 48 hours. Okay, what did Carla say that I missed? Craft, eat, YouTube, repeat. Yes, Tanya! That is right. Uh oh, I missed what Carla said. Okay. I missed it. Sounds good to you too. Okay, I'm flipping stones all over the place. All right, so I'm pretty close. Now I'm just going to find where my holes are and move some by hand. Crafting and gardening until temps. Yeah, that's, I used to love the heat. Mm -mm, not anymore. I would tell people I'd much rather be in 90, 95 degree weather than 50 to 60 degree weather. And I kind of changed my attitude on that. All right, Chris, you got your 90-inch TV uh, watching it? <laughs> I think that looks good. I think I think they're in the right place. So we're going to move these off to the side. And move them over. So I made a cow joke. Move, because I made a cow shirt. Move them over. So for anybody the one here for the cow shirt, I'll show it just a little bit. It's a Highland cow shirt. Hey, baby giant services. Welcome in. All right, looks good.
Exactly, Sheila. All right, had one that came out of the little hole there, so just shove it over with your fingernail, you'll be fine. <laughs> Should have called the channel MT Living and Eating. That's funny. I do like to sweep now. You like to sweep? I wish I did. I don't like to fold clothes and put them up. Oh, I've gotten so where I don't want to do anything. Okay. So the little sticky flock doesn't want that stone to come up. So we're just going to probably place it by hand. We'll see if I got it to come Oh, I got it to come up. So this is what happens when you're using that really sticky flock and then you start using your transfer tape. As the transfer tape gets less sticky because you're putting it down on the flock and then peeling it up and with that super sticky flock, not all your stones always want to come up. Thanks Yvonne. So Sheila, I used to um, work in Houston a lot, and it was so, so humid there, but people didn't get wrinkles because there's so much moisture in the air. I was like, I don't know, would I rather have wrinkles or and be in this heat or no wrinkles? Or, I'm sorry, you know what I'm trying to say. I'm trying to concentrate. You know what I'm trying to say. Rat glue, yes. I did, Gail. I think I call it rat glue. You know those little rat strips or mice strips that, that um, make it where the little mouse can't get off? Okay, there's a ton of them not sticking down over here. All right. So... The guy on, um, I can't even remember the name of the place, but he's on on Monday nights. He says not to do this, but sometimes you just got to do what you got to do because it wears out, it wears out your transfer tape, but my sanity cannot take it, so I'm doing it anyway. Oh, Dems call it rat trap glue too. Okay, maybe I call it mouse trap or uh, or fly fly paper. Maybe it was fly paper. You know how you used to put those strips up and the flies would fly into them and then they couldn't get off of them. Please, please. How much you say? Please give us better. Thanks, M and T doing and cooking. I am struggling over here. All right, come on, baby. They're not all coming up on my hand place them. At this point, it's gonna be faster to hand place the two. The problem is it's kind of hard to know where they go. Okay. Because I can see where that one goes, so. Because of the ombre, you can't always tell where they go, but this is far enough away from it that I can tell. So I'm going to place it right up here. Try not to shake too much and get it in the wrong place. And then, okay, this one should be easy. It's at the top of the O. And see, it's really stuck to that. Uh, Okay, I don't really like where those landed. So, where are you? There you are. Move over just a little bit. You don't need to be touching your brother and sister there. Oops. Good enough. See, I can do good enough when it's not like measurements. And then, I should move these so I can lay the shirt out a little bit better. Sheila, when's your birthday? Let's 
see how long you have before you have to have a birthday shirt done. All righty. Boy, that's pretty. Now, sometimes your shirts will contract with the heat. And so if, when I put this down, if the top half of God and then all things are, aren't in the right place. Holy crud, what did I do? <laughs> I don't know what I did. When I took it apart, when I took it apart in the software, I didn't do a good job. Because they're not in the right place. And that's, that's on me. It was how I broke it apart to cut it. So we're just going to cut down the middle here. I'm just going to have all things are right on top of possible. Like literally on top, not slightly above. On top. And that's not possible. <laughs> okay. I'm struggling tonight. Okay. So we're going to lay these down. And you're going to see some holes in there because we have the ombre to fill in. And I feel like that looks pretty good. This is a nice design that doesn't cause too much gapping between the outline and the inside. So it makes it blingier as Precious Pieces would say. Precious Pieces, are you home from Bible study yet? Okay, let's go ahead and press that on. Need to do 10 shirts. Oh my goodness. Now, I'm not sure that this is going to have a huge contrast, but I'm going to love it. Okay, so Sheila, when is your birthday? Oh, that looks good. Nice, 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 nice. Okay, let's go ahead and move that. And then I might as well put down my all things are. No, actually, I want to go ahead and put the second part here because see, there's something that has to tie in right there. So I want to make sure I do that right. So I'm going to clean up the rest of these stones, get them put back in the little case, and let's see, move that over. And so, let me show you when I put these back in here, how full it still is. I could do this faster if I put it on my little kneading thingy, but look at how full that still is. Let me turn it sideways so you can see. So you can get, now it's going to fall, so it's not going to look as full. You can get a lot of stuff out of these little chips. Yeah, you know, unless you're doing like the whole design in one, then you're, you're not going to get as far. Oh, tomorrow is your March birthday. Today was my February birthday. I wondered at school, I didn't even look, what kids had birthdays today and they only get their true, true birthday once every four years. <laughs> All right, March 1st. Delana's March birthday is tomorrow. Delanda, when's your May birthday going to be? You want to share a birthday with me? A 36th wedding anniversary. Congratulations, Martin. That's a big feat. And Vesta says, happy early birthday, Delanda. I'm trying to remember when Delanda's real birthday was. It was when craftable things had been at some expo and then went to Houston or Tech or Dallas or Houston or wherever. Okay. I think that's been a few months ago. May 1st. Nope. 
We can't share both things in. Okay, let me move this up a little bit. October 1st. Oh, so her birthday is on the 1st, so then it's going to be the 1st of every month. Oh, and also, if I can figure it out before we leave, um, hi, Yolanda. I had talked about like telling people when I was going to do a giveaway for my 30K, this, that, and the other. And then I decided I don't want to post that. I want to give it to people that like are there because they want to be there. So I'm going to try on my own tonight to figure out that tool. Hey, Bows and More. All right, last one to brush in, and then we'll press this, and then we'll press the bottom words, and then we're going to see if I can on my own, since I don't have my fellow crafters on here to walk me through it, if I can figure out how to get that giveaway to work. I think I can. We'll see. I love this olivine color. I didn't even use it until just recently, and I saw it on that, and I loved it. Valerie, October 5th. Hate to be young, gifted black. I didn't even see you come in. But thanks for being here. So I was talking about barely leaving the house this weekend. Do you guys have anything big planned or is big for you like me, staying home and getting to do what you want to do? I used to love to always be on the go doing something. Always, always, always. I couldn't stand not being on the go. And I'm so totally opposite of that now. I just love my quiet homebody time. Where are your August people? August 8th. Staying home and crafting good. March 22nd, Bonetta, happy early birthday. You'll have to remind us as we get closer when it's your birthday. August 13th for Porgy. Finally finishing my craft tabletop so I can screw it down. So, what did you make your tabletop out of, Naomi? You're welcome. And Kelly's birthday's the 18th. Okay, what in the world? What are you doing in there? Some teeny tiny little stone that I got mixed in with those. I know when, probably that night I was doing, the night I had to resort to the SS6 stones instead of SS10s because I made my template wrong and didn't know it. What else did I make that night? Did I make something with olivine that night? Because I had one of those little bitty stones mixed in here with the olivine. And sometimes you just, you'll have one on your table and you don't even realize it. Then you start brushing all your stones back together and lo and behold, you have one that doesn't belong. <laughs> like the pictures, what is not like the others? Oh, uh, it's that, that little bitty crystal AB stone. It's not like those big green stones. This looks lovely. This is really, really nice template. March 9th, granddaughter's March 15th, and mom is March 5th. March 21st. Oh, you and hubbies are right next to each other. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't want to be carless either. I mean, I I like staying home, but I also don't like being stuck without wheels. Alrighty. 
Now, if you live in the city without wheels, it's probably not as big of a deal, but it's not like we have city buses or taxis. Of course, I'm sure we can get Uber here. Somebody in this town probably is an Uber driver. Oh, I have an extra stone right there. Chris. Oh, Chris. Chris, you missed my stone. I didn't give you time. I didn't even ask you, though, did I, Chris? That's what she's going to say. Didn't even show it very closely. Jesse probably told me. All right, that looks good, I think. Let's go ahead and put the stones up. Now, I think I brought it over here. There we go. Brought it over here. So if you have one of these bigger things, you can scoop your stones in those and be a little bit faster than what I was trying to do earlier. The only issue with me is my table has like a one inch. It's like an inch and a quarter maybe thick. And so if you put too many on at one time, they want to bounce, and they can bounce off of it. So you still can't brush a ton of them off at one time. Okay, put a craft table by making a base on wheels, two Ikea eight cube calyx units, and a loaf of case I made. It was three by three foot by six feet. That's good. It's a nice size. This is only like 46 inches, so it's not even four feet. That's great. All right, let's just do these with my hand. All right, let's put this on, get the last little bit on, and then we'll be done with crafting for the night. Okay, these are coming up a little better than that last set. Only one so far. Of course, we're strange now. I know, that's right. I don't really like Ubering though, Gail. I do it in, like, when we've gone on work conferences and stuff like that, but I don't really like to. Well, matter of fact, when we were up at Wallapalooza, our truck had an issue. So we did a little bit of Ubering up there. Yeah, I'd like to see it. I'd like you to post it. But then, you know, like my daughter especially, she doesn't think a thing about it. I used to make her when she was in college and she was going to be Ubering, I'd be like, okay, I want to be on the phone with you when you get in the vehicle and then I want this person to know you're on the phone. <laughs> Oops, I got really quiet. I'm concentrating. Concentrating. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Mm, I could move it a little bit. Let's see. I need the green to be up further, so I'm going to kind of manipulate my shirt down. That looks good. I like it. I'm happy with it. Hope it looks good when I'm done with it. Three-quarter inch birch plywood. Nice. So, you talk about butcher block. I love the butcher block. I got the like butcher block look from a Home Depot pre-made one that I had to stain. Well, I had to sand it and stain it. No, not stain it, but put polyacrylic on it. And I really like those that you can get at Home Depot. And they're not too, too pricey. Thanks, Evesta. So, D, this is the ombre on this. This is a Patrice design. And I think she's the first person I remember that introduced us to the ombre style. 
and I love it. I do love it. Okay. So there we go. Does not look great under here, but wait till you see it out there. One more layer, but it's already brushed in. So I had it in the wrong place. Oh, that's gonna be cute. Okay, I feel like I should have this higher because that's probably why the design is the way it is. And you know how I told you I moved them incorrectly? I might have moved these apart. They may not be in the right place, but it's going to look fine. We're going to make it look fine. Okay. Kevin, hey, how are you? Hope you're feeling okay. Hope you're recovering well. I'm so happy to see you in here. This is not my typical, you know, I love pink. Love pink, love blues. And this is not my typical colors, but it's pretty. Yes, Dee, she is phenomenal. All right, turn that off. We are done with him for the night. Okay, I saw Kevin said something. Let's see what he said. Still sore, but less and less every day. Good. I'm glad to hear that, Kevin. Okay, let's go ahead and, boy, I left that on there a long time, didn't I? Let's go ahead and take that off and let's go ahead and remove that one from the screen. Okay, so, move over. Let me just get rid of that because I don't need it anymore. Voila! Ooh, look at that. Okay, I like it. Hold the shirt straight, Marilyn. Let me, let me get this a little closer. Here, here's what I can do. I'll just push my table. Everything in my room, almost everything. Almost everything in here is on wheels. Tim put it on wheels so I could just easily move things around. And it really worked out great for tonight. I'm trying to hold it right. Isn't that pretty? I love that. Patrice, you did a great job. Looks so good. So I have a link to Patrice's store, Craftable Things, in the video description since I made her shirt. And the Baby's Booties rhinestones. So check them out. Again, the buy-in is on. If you don't really know a lot about rhinestones here, I don't want to be that close to the camera. If you don't know much about rhinestones, she has a buy now store, which means it's um, smaller quantities. So you can get the chips or you can get 100 gross. So this is 250 gross. You can get 100 gross. You can get those in the buy now. The benefit is you can order whenever you want and they ship out very quickly. If you want to get larger quantities at more um, non-retail prices, so I would say the buy now is more like retail and then the buy in is not retail, then the buy in is going on right now and I don't see my magnet over there. It's on the side of something. Is it on that side? Yep, there it is. When does the buy-in end, guys? Let's see. Let me grab it. I think it's till what, March 10th or something? Let's see. Yes. So, on the bag it says February 29th today, but it did start maybe one or two days early. And then it goes to March 10th. So, if you use my link and you go to the Baby's Booty Store, you have the option of either going to the buy-in 
or the Buy Now, which takes you to a Hot Fix Fix site. The Buy In takes you to her, um, you know, the larger quantities at stones at less prices, less price per stone. So check that out. Um, I do have a link to the two designs I was going to do tonight on the DTF. And I only got one of them done. So you'll see the other design is a cute summer design. And then here's my little Highland cow design that we made uh, with the DTF printer. And we went through that whole process. So if you're interested in seeing that, zip that little line back to the left. Check that out on the replay later, either one. Let's see, she is, yes, and thank you, Sheila. So the shirt I'm wearing, I should have linked it too. She is designed, this is Crafting with Delonga. She made this template. It was one of her first ones. It's phenomenal. Yeah, Renee, I love that cow. It is cute. So check out that link. The link's in the video description. If you're interested in Pro Color, I have that link. If you spend so much, you can use the discount code and get a discount. But that is it for tonight. So beautiful shirt here. Cute, cute little Highland cow shirt. And then this one that turned out so pretty. Just gorgeous, gorgeous. The colors. So if you're going to ask about the colors, I'm just going to say them anyway. The colors are rose gold. Is that considered a chrome? That's a volcano chrome. So rose gold is the top, the outline, and the word possible. And then the top half of God and all things are. That's volcano chrome. And then the bottom half of God is olivine or olivine so that's really pretty the stones on my shirt on Delonda's design the outside is my favorite labrador then the she is the inside that's candy apple the she is me is candy apple and then all the words those are silver cyan metalites so I kind of like how this is all reds and silvers mixed in together. And then this is all different colors. So. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Gail. I appreciate you putting that in there. Thanks, Dee. Thanks, Delanda. Thanks, Carrie. And best to everyone. Everyone that was saying it up there. Terry, Jesse. Thanks, Creative Kim. Hey, Creative Kim. So thanks for being in here tonight. I do appreciate it. Um, I love that we have just such a nice crafting community. We can come in and just have fun and be so positive. And the chat, everybody kind of gets to know each other's personalities. I love that part. Thanks, Me Wand Rancher. Um, now, yeah, <laughs> Sheila, I know what this and this and this and this. Thanks, Kevin. So tomorrow night, as if it's still the plan. Eve, are you still coming on tomorrow night? Uh, Patrice isn't going to be able to make it on tomorrow night. She has something else that she's dealing with right now. And so I think Eve's coming on tomorrow night. Eve, if you'll let us know. And if you're coming on tomorrow night, are you coming on at the typical time that Patrice would? Thank you. And then, okay, so Eve's coming on tomorrow night. And then Eve always comes on on Sunday nights. So tomorrow night... If she's coming on at the same time, then it's about 6.30 Central Time, 7.30 Eastern Time. Eve on typical Patrice time. Okay. Eve on Sunday, she'll come on 8 Central Time, 9 Eastern Time typically. She did come on a little early when she was doing a bigger project with us. Uh, let's see. Mondays, Angel B comes on. Tuesday and Wednesday, Delana comes on. Thursday, I come on. Dems comes on when I'm at work. She does car chats, lunchtime chats. Um, so anyway, check everybody out. And thank you so much for being here tonight. I hope to get some videos done this weekend. So we'll put those out. If you guys have any questions from the video and I didn't answer them, go ahead and put them in the comment section after the video's over, under the video, and I'll check those out. But 
I'm done. I appreciate you guys being here. And so you're welcome, Martin. Thank you. Thanks, Nikki. Until my next one. Bye. See you later.